What's up guys? Readiness Reviews here with you again. And I finally received my package from the Hunter's Lodge. If you're not caught up in this series, back in September, I made an order from the Hunter's Lodge, who is well known for taking an extremely long time to deliver the goods you order from them. And here we are in December, and it has finally arrived. I know a lot of people told me that I would never get anything. They did send me something. Check this out. This has to be the absolute biggest package we've ever taken a look at on the channel. Now, I ordered four rifles from the Hunter's Lodge, and as we can see here, there are three rifle boxes. It appears to be packaged quite well. There's plenty of tape holding these together, and man, is this package heavy. I don't believe anyone has ever opened a package from the Hunter's Lodge before on YouTube, so this may be a first. Let's get this over to the reviewing desk, open it up, and see if they actually sent me what I ordered, and what kind of condition whatever they sent me is in. All right, so here we are with our stack of rifle boxes. As we can see there on the outside of the package, they have stamped their name, Hunter's Lodge Corp, for all to see. One of the first things about this package that I found quite odd is that it was shipped via USPS. I didn't know you could ship firearms USPS, but apparently Hunter's Lodge can. The Hunter's Lodge charged me $104 for shipping. The actual cost they paid to ship this package was about $53. So if you include material cost and labor, I guess the shipping price sounds about right. They maybe made 30 bucks off shipping. We're gonna be opening this today with a bayonet. As always, if you know what the bayonet is, let me know down in the comments. They taped this box up very well. I'll give them that much. Now let's see what we have in box number one. First thing is some more cardboard. Oh boy, I just peeked in there and saw a muzzle and that muzzle looks freaking rough. Oh no, what the heck? This is the number four infield I ordered from them. Before we get all the way into this, just take a look at that. Something about that front end doesn't look quite right and right away we're missing the front sight. What the heck kind of gunk is that on this? Oh boy, we might have bit off a little bit more than we can chew with this one. We'll look further into that after we get the rest of these out. That's all in box number one. Let's take a look at box number two. There appear to be two rifles in this box. The first one in that stack appears to be one of the Spanish Mausers, and they did package the bolt separately. This thing, Wow, can you even call this a rifle? That's the actual length with no editing. Now we know this is our 1888 commission rifle, but we most certainly don't have a complete stock. This might just be a barreled action. And finally, let's get that last rifle out of here. And that's gonna be our other Spanish Mauser, model 1943, I do believe. So how is our actual packing material looking? So the boxes were packed fairly well, and we have a decent layer of bubble wrap on everything, and the bolts on the rifles seem to be packaged separately. All those are positives. It seems like they're doing a decent job packing the rifles. I've certainly had worse packing jobs from more reputable retailers in the past. I think we're gonna work our way from worst to best. And so we will start with this very sad 1888 commission rifle. On their listing for this 1888 commission rifle, they made it very clear that you were basically just buying a barreled action, that these rifles will be broken and missing parts and in an extremely poor condition, but the price did reflect that. So I'm not one bit surprised that they sent me like half a gun. Let's see if anything on this is salvageable at all. I guess it wasn't worth the investment of bubble wrap, just packing paper, no big deal. We got a bolt at least. And an 1888 commission rifle bolt is no cheap part. Well, I say it's a bolt, it's more like a bolt body. So the bolt head is gone, the cocking mechanism is gone. So that is pretty much a piece of trash. Not much you can do with that at all without buying all the parts for it. This is actually the cheapest part of the bolt, just the bolt body. And as far as our barreled action goes, we do have the sights, so that's a plus. The wood for the forehand is mostly intact, but the metal is super, super rusty. We have a sling loop, no cleaning rod, 
We do have our front end hardware, but the fit and alignment seems very rough. There's a big old dent in the barrel sleeve there, and we have our front sight. Of course, we're missing our buttstock. The receiver is an S-marked Spandau 1890 receiver. The bolt release hardware seems to still be intact. We do have our trigger assembly. We're missing one of our action screws. The front screw is there. I mean, let's be honest, the, the stock is inexistent. But this was just an add-on item for me. I was curious to see what they would send, and this is about what I expected. So in all honesty, I'm actually not that upset. I mean, this was like $100, and for me, this can be cleaned up and make a pretty interesting wall hanger, which I'm sure it has all kinds of awesome history itself. And trading a $100 bill for this isn't the worst thing I've ever done. I said we're going worst to best, so I guess that means the number four infield's next. Now, they did take the time to put this one in bubble wrap, although it doesn't really look like that trouble was necessary because this thing is a complete piece of junk from what I'm seeing so far. This number four infield came in at less than $200, and for less than $200, you really can't expect much. I most certainly did not get much. These kind of fell out when I was looking at that, though. What are these? Looks like we have some shell casings here. Let's take a look at this right quick. Looks like we have a 7mm Mauser case and an 8mm Mauser case, and I guess that's to prove that they test-fired both of the Spanish Mausers. I just hope this ammo wasn't corrosive. Oh, boy. Am I gonna have my work cut out for me on this piece of crap? Look, what is all over the stock? It's not cosmoline, the stock looks burnt. Like what even is this? Our front handguard is broke and that's why it wasn't really lining up in the front end the way that it should. That sling loop looks very questionable, but hey, most of our hardware is here. We are missing the front sight and that's unfortunate. I don't know what this is coated in, it's so gunked on. It's like some kind of paint or insane dried on grease or who knows what. I have no idea. Does the bolt even open? Well, I guess it does. The bolt opens and it... It was so gunked up that it just like flew across the room. They did not include the bolt head. That's disappointing, but a number four bolt heads aren't all that expensive. Basically with this one, all that I'm hoping is that the barreled action is in some kind of condition that's worth restoring. And what I would do is just buy completely new stock hardware for this. Number four stocks are not too overly expensive in comparison to other Millsurp stocks. So changing all this out won't be that bad. Look at this butt stock. There's no butt plate. It is just worn down and hideous. There's wood underneath that. But I don't know what that is on the outside of this. Did somebody like leave this in a tar pit? Or something like I just don't know part of the rear sights broke off I'll insert footage of the bore here if we can see that I'm sure the bore's trash as well and for the magazine they even left out the spring and follower so I didn't even get a decent magazine out of the deal boy when they said that these were dirty and broken and missing parts they did not lie this thing is a piece of crap for real but it might have just enough left in it for me to bring it back to life at some point in the future, this is certainly going to be a huge undertaking. And should we decide to invest that time and energy, it will definitely become a restoration series here on the YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel for future videos. I'm going to go ahead and say at this point in the video, if you were thinking about making an order from Hunter's Lodge and these number four infields seemed enticing to you, you might want to rethink that because you're probably going to be disappointed. I do not think that this portion of a rifle that I received is worth that $200 price point. I mean, it's even missing the safety. The firing pin looks broke. This thing is really a garbage rod. Now that we've seen both the bad and the ugly, I'm hoping only the good is left. These are our Spanish Mausers. They did include those spent cases, so that makes me believe that at the very least, these are functional firearms. All right, so this first one here is looking very interesting. It's marked Spain 1922, and check that sight out. It's like a Longa Vizier sight. I wasn't really expecting that. That's interesting. Now there is some black spray paint on this. It's sort of in bands on the stock. And I'm gonna have to look up if that has any military provenance. I'm actually not sure. Of course, if you know about the use of black paint in Spanish service or anywhere else these firearms might have served and what that might mean, let me know down in the comments. 
This was imported by Century Arms International, and the stamp on it has it as a model 1916 in 308 Winchester. Pretty sure the ad on the website says that these were in 7mm Mauser, which was the original cartridge. When a lot of these rifles came into the country, they were rechambered into 308 Winchester, and so I wouldn't be surprised if this rifle did undergo that conversion. There is a cartouche in the stock there, but hey, besides this paint that is sort of bled onto some of the metal parts, all that can be removed and cleaned up fairly easily. I'll be inserting a picture of the bore here. Hopefully that condition is at least semi-serviceable. And here's our bolt. And that does fit well and lock right in. There's a serial number on the receiver, 17138. That matches the magazine floor plate. The bolt is a mismatch. So a couple matching serial numbers at least, not too bad. And they did include a cleaning rod. That's a nice little bonus. The crown looks to be in pretty good shape. Our front side is included. There's a little crack in our handguard there, but other than that, this stock looks really nice. So I'm certainly happy about that for the price they list these for. Couldn't have asked for much better, actually. Spanish Mausers these days are not as cheap as they used to be. This rifle's coming in at about half of current market value for Spanish Mausers, if not even a little less than that. So that's all bonuses as far as I'm concerned. I'm gonna have to do some research on this though, because this site is definitely something I was not expecting. Spanish Mausers are not an expertise of mine. These were actually the first Spanish Mausers in my collection. And since I wanted to add a couple Spanish Mausers to the collection, that's the whole reason that I ended up making this order from the Hunter's Lodge in the first place. Now our last rifle here is supposed to be a 1943 Spanish Mauser. The 1943 Spanish Mauser uses a 98K action. They are chambered in eight millimeter Mauser. There's our bolt on this one. It's looking pretty clean. And I think we might have ended up actually doing these in order of worst to best because this one looks to be in the nicest overall condition. The metal parts are all nicely oiled. All of our hardware is present. We don't have the cleaning rod on this one, but we do have dual bayonet lugs, our H band there with all of the appropriate springs. Front side is intact. Crown looks pretty good. We have our import stamp on this one. That's also Century Arms International, and this one says M43 Spain 7.92 caliber, which is gonna be eight millimeter Mauser. Standard leaf rear sight. And there's our Spanish crest. Date on this one appears to be 1947, so post Second World War. Caliber 7.92 inscribed on the side there. And our serial number, G245. Matching serial numbers on the magazine base plate. And holy crap, a matching bolt, 245. That is astounding. I would have never thought I would have received a rifle with a matching bolt from Hunter's Lodge. Wow, so that was a great deal. We'll insert bore footage of this one right now as well. Now, of course, I haven't looked at that yet, so hopefully that is in at least decent shape, and if it is, I am definitely happy with this particular rifle. Of course, we are gonna have future videos on all of these rifles here on the channel, so make sure you are subscribed to catch that content when it comes out. I'm really blown away that I actually received what I ordered from the Hunter's Lodge after all these years of people telling me how terrible they are and how it's not worth the time investment to actually purchase from them. In this situation, I'm gonna say I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Did I get my money's worth for the whole order? out of these two rifles, I'm gonna say it's pretty dang close. I think I got a better deal buying these from the Hunter's Lodge than I could have buying them from a gun show or on Gun Broker. And I did get a couple little project or part guns out of the transaction. Now, if I would've just went into it and only bought these two and received these two, that would've been a great buy. Literally the best deal in the Milsert market right now. So if you're willing to roll the dice, take a gamble, and send your hard-earned money over to the Hunter's Lodge and wait three plus months for what they send you, you might get lucky as well. Now, of course, this is in no way an endorsement. There's been far too many people tell me of their negative experiences with the Hunter's Lodge for me to recommend them to someone else. It is just a data point that I did receive what I ordered and I'm at least content with the merchandise I received. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you liked this video. Many more videos like it coming in the future. Of course, if you notice anything about any of these rifles that I did not talk about in the video, let me know down in the comments, especially 
with this 1916 Spanish Mauser, this one is sort of an oddball and not exactly what I was expecting. It's a little bit non-standard. And let me know if you would ever take the same gamble I did and send an order into the Hunter's Lodge. If you do, best of luck. This has been quite the ordeal trying to keep in touch with the Hunter's Lodge these past several months. But as you can see, we have conclusion. The best advice I can give you if you do decide to make an order from them is to stay on top of them, call often to check the status of your order, and maybe then you won't be waiting half a year to receive what you're going to receive. All right, guys, that's about it for this video. I'll catch you in the next one. See you then. Peace.